Sometimes I have uh, people call me for, ask me for, for different shlombite issues and things like that. And many times people think that I'm uh, more harsh on the guys. More harsh on the guys about how their manners are terrible and so on. Many, many, many people think that. And they're right. I am. It's true. I am more harsh on the guys. Why? Because more times than not, guys act like animals. But it doesn't mean that the women are all malachim. Many times, the guys act certain ways because the women don't know how to treat them. Now, if a guy, if a man, if a husband, if a Jew, is going to be a good husband, he has to learn Torah. If a woman is going to be a good wife, she also has to learn Torah, and she has to convince him to learn Torah. The problem is that sometimes we think that we are good enough by ourselves, and everybody else is nothing. And what ends up happening is that you have women that they go to a shiur Torah, they read tailing with their girlfriends, they speak divrei Torah among each other, and become little rabbitsons among each other. And their husbands, they care less what they do. And they disrespect their husbands in such an awful way, thinking that it's okay. Now, if you disrespect your husband and you don't make sure that your husband is a king in your house, for sure you're not a queen. If you treat your husband like he's some janitor, if you disrespect him like he's a nobody, if you make fun of your husband by calling him a loser, for sure you're going to gain him. Why? Because Isha bona, Isha oreset. A woman builds, a woman destroys. If you do not build your husband to make sure he wants to learn Torah, he wants to do mitzvot, he wants to do everything possible to make sure that a Kadosh Baruch is happy, even if it's just to please you. If you don't get him to that, you have failed miserably in this world. Why? You think that maybe because you make some YouTube videos for your girlfriends to watch, you think because you walk around modest, you think because that because you read the parasha, you think that because you know a few things about Torah, that gets you Ganeden? No, that you're not going to find a single place in the Torah that says that. There's not a single place in the Torah that says that a woman that gives Shure Torah, or a woman that knows Torah, or a woman that reads Tehilim every day is going to Ganeden. Not a single place. You know what it says? You have to get your husband to go learn Torah. How do you get him? Why? Do you think if you call him a loser, he's going to go learn Torah? You think if you tell him, listen, you don't learn, no food. Stay outside. Sleep on a, on a, on a bench with the homeless people. You think, you think that's, uh, that's going to get him to go learn Torah? You think it's going to build your husband? Best case scenario, be a loser. At the best case scenario. Why? A husband, as macho as he is, needs the support of his wife. He needs to feel like he's the best. In her eyes. Same thing with the woman. Woman needs to feel like she's the most beautiful in her husband's eyes. If the husband looks at other women, automatically that makes the wife feel ugly. Why? Why is he looking at other women if I'm pretty? So if he's looking at other women, whether it be internet or in real life or whatever. If he's looking at other women, then obviously I'm not pretty enough for him. So maybe I should be more provocative. Or maybe I should look like one of these parot, one of these cows that walks around with no clothes. Or maybe I should act like... She starts thinking she's self-conscious. Why? He's not looking at me. He's not paying me attention. He's not telling me how much he loves me. Surely, so that means that he doesn't think I'm pretty. He doesn't think of this. So she loses her confidence based on the attention her husband gets. But it's not a one-way street, ladies. It's not a one-way street. The husband, if the wife does not make him feel like a king... As soon as he gets into the house, there is no one second, honey, I'm finishing a phone call. That doesn't exist in a Jewish house. It doesn't exist. As soon as you hear your husband that learned yesterday's shield that knows he has to knock on his own house door, hang up. Hang up. No, no, honey, I'll be with you in a second. Nothing like that. The second your husband arrives in the house, you have to stop everything you're doing, go say hello. 
Oh, but I'm relaxing on the couch. Get up. The king arrived. Bemet. That's what Allah is. You have to get up when the husband came home. You have to get up. Why? He's the king. Well, how come he doesn't treat me like a queen? Because you didn't make him a king. You treated him like he's some bus driver. You treat him like he's some teacher. You treat him like he's some uh, whatever his profession is. Not as a king. So, obviously, you cannot be a queen if he's not a king. The second he arrives home, you have to stop what you're doing. Go welcome your husband. Yeah, but I'm tired. Okay, so become untired. Become untired. Just like when your girlfriend shows up, and you are tired, but as soon as your girlfriend shows up, all of a sudden you have energy. All of a sudden you have energy to talk for four hours straight about everything that happened in the last three hours since you last talked to her. All of a sudden you have energy. Before she came, you had the uh, sponge on your head. Oh, I'm dying, honey. I'm dying. I'm dying. I need to rest. I'm dying. The second your girlfriend came, uh, came out, she came out. Oh, what do you do? Four hours speech. Four hours. Four, you just spoke to her three hours ago. How do you have four hours of material? Four hours haven't passed since the last you spoke to her. Four hours, you have energy all of a sudden. Three hours ago, you're almost dying. But she showed up to your house. Surprise, surprise, surprise. All of a sudden, you have an energy. No, why are you told to go? No, no, I'm, I'm okay, I'm okay. I thought you were dying, honey. I was going to call 911. No, no, I'm okay, I'm okay. You're extreme. Well, you just told me to call 911. All of a sudden, you have energy. Your husband arrived. You have to have the most amount of energy in the world. Meaning, you have to look pretty. Do not welcome your husband with a sponge on your head looking like you just came from Tisha B'Av. You came from some funeral. Makeup's over here, 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 and there. It looks like you're some cartoon. <laughs> you have to look pretty when you're... Yeah, but he comes home late. It's 10 o'clock at night. Okay, so be ready at 10 o'clock at night. Why? That's your job. The king arrived. The king arrived. You want to be a queen? You have to have a king. There's no queen by herself unless it's in England. <laughs> 500 years, she's a queen, no husband. Woman is uh, older than the, than, than, than the uh, some religions in the world. Where's the husband? So, king arrived, you have to look pretty. You have to get ready. Guess what? He has to have food too. Oh, but I'm tired. Okay, so you should have been untired and made him food. Okay, honey, I'll, I'll, I'll make, make him what he likes. Why? He went to learn Torah. He went to learn to learn. Make him what he likes. If your husband is picky when it comes to food, make him what he likes. Don't tell him, here's some potato chips. Laila Tov. If your husband's picky, you want him to become a Talmud Chacham, feed him. Now, I'm not telling you that uh, you have to make him a three course meal every night, but he has to be happy. He has to feel that when he comes home, he's welcome there. Never use such language like, oh, you're here? What do you mean, oh, I'm, I live here? What do you mean, oh, I'm here? Where do you want me to be? Oh, no, I thought you were working. Are you implying that I should go back to work? I could just live at work if you want. Maybe you'll pay the mortgage. You have to be excited. You have to be excited to see your husband. Why? He's the king. The king arrived. Now, if you're... Half asleep, make us always here. You only look good when you go to the supermarket for Jose. <laughs> Guess what? Your husband's not going to be happy. So he's going to say, listen, I'm learning Torah, but no one cares. If I made money, she cared. Why? I, was, I bought her a nice diamond bracelet, she cared. But when I got a chidush, she didn't care. In fact, she told me I don't even like it. Guess what? You just destroyed his entire Ego, his entire confidence system. You didn't like his story about Moshe Rabbeinu. You didn't like his story about Rabbi Akiva. You said, no, no, the rabbi says it better. Guess what? You just destroyed him. You are going to be judged in Shemaim as a murderer. Why? Your husband gave you a story. You didn't like it? You have to pretend you like it. Just like he sometimes pretends to like your food, you have to pretend to like his story. Why? Isha bona, isha oreset. Just like you don't like when he compares you to his mother, don't compare him to the rabbi. 
like his stories, cheer him up. Honey, you're really getting better at this. Wow, I love this. Pretend. Pretend. Why? You have to build them. One of the G'dolei Ador. One of the G'dolei Ador, Rabotai Karim. When he was still a Nar, a young guy, 20 years old, just got married. Already at 20 years old, no one knew who he was. His wife would call him G'dol Ador. One of his, one of the Avrechim at his call, a young guy, came, knocked at the house. Yes? Oh, I want to see... He said his name. Who? Call him by his first name. Who you want to see? Nobody like that. No, oh, what? This is not the house of a... You mean the Gdola Dor? You dare call the Gdola Dor by, by his first name? The guy got shot. He's not really this. Bushav, she, she, in Smamash, made the guy, the, she, she, red his whole face became red. Why? She, how are you calling the Gdola Dor? One time another guy came to the house. And the Rav said, come here. And she saw that the guy is taking his time. She yelled at him. The G'dol Ador is telling you to stand up. You're still sitting. You know what happened to him? He became the G'dol Ador. He became the biggest rabbi in the world. You know why? His wife built him up. But if your wife tells you you're a loser, at the best case scenario, you'll become a loser. If your wife insults you, tells you you're nothing, I should have married somebody else. Guess what? He wishes you did too. At the best case scenario, you'll be a loser. So this is why Rabotai Musar is for everyone. Not just for the husbands. Not just for the wives. For everyone. For your kids too. For your kids too. It is more common that men do certain things that are worse than what women do. But nonetheless, unfortunately today... People in general do not know how to treat each other. They don't know how to treat each other, they don't know how to respect each other, and then they complain that they don't want to be with each other. Oh, he doesn't want to be with me anymore. Yeah, who would? Who would want to be with you? I'm surprised he even said, that, oh, I do in the first case. All you do is insult. You never want to do anything good. Everything is for you, 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 you. You're the most selfish person on planet Earth. So he's doing you a favor. He's leaving you alone so he can be with you. Marry yourself. This is a common problem. Because everyone is looking for themselves. You want to be married successfully? You have to do everything possible for the other side. With nothing expected in return. Do everything possible to make her happy. You do everything possible to make him happy. If all of your attention is only focused on making each other happy, guess what? You'll both be happy. But if you're only going to work off of the barter system, the barter system, which is, I'm going to do this for you, if you do this for me, guess what? You're both going to be miserable. Why? Who goes first? I'll do it after you do it. I'll do it after you do it. And guess what? Nobody does anything. Everybody stays miserable. You sit in the same house, and you're roommates, not soulmates. Roommates. Yeah, I live with this lady. You mean your wife? Yeah, 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 whatever you want to call it. Yeah, that, that one. She cooks once in a while. Yeah, that one. The chef. The cleaning lady. And she tells her girlfriend, yeah, the uh, plumber. You mean your husband? Yeah, whatever. The guy that unplugs the toilet whenever it gets uh, flowed. Yeah, that guy. He's there. Yeah. That's what happens. Why? No love. It's roommates. You have to be soulmates. You have to love each other. But that means you have to remove yourself. I don't want anything in return. I just want to make you happy. What happens if you're doing everything possible to make her happy and she's not making you happy? Keep going. Kill them with kindness. Keep doing your job. Don't worry about their job. Focus on making them happy with other shem. It'll be reciprocated or at the worst case scenario, you'll just have a lot of kaparat of You go to Gan Eden just for that. But that's a, a very important question today because simply you have sim you know, people getting married but they don't know how to stay married. Because there's virtually no courses for how to remain married. There's consultants that charge you three, four hundred dollars a month just to hear you complain. You have to know what to do. Those consultants are not going to help you. You can help you. You can help you by listening to the Torah. Next question, we're almost... Oh no, we have some time.